When you get the inspiration to write something, what do you do next? Well, usually the, I, there's a... I, as opposed to people who uh, get inspiration and sit in a corner and develop it into this wonderful piece, um, usually I've had an agreement. There's some particular thing that I wanted to work on. Or the theater, like uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, we, had a, uh, we had a deadline that we had mm -hmm. to, to meet and it had to have certain parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, there were, it had to be checked with the palace, for instance, yeah. you know. So uh, there were s certain parameters. Um, but usually I, I was working from a very clear idea of what it was that I was going to be writing, mm -hmm. uh, what the, the aim was. If, for instance, um, there was a, uh, a, a, there was a, like the silent majority uh, was an issue at one point. Uh, that was the uh, number of fundamentalists in the states were, uh, g getting power and, and trying to enforce their positions on the rest of the society. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ken said, would you uh, like to write a play about this? This is in the air. And I, and I thought to myself, well, now, um, one of the things that happened in church history, which I knew about, was uh, St. Augustine uh, in the fourth century um, turning, going from a uh, conversion experience, a spiritual experience, to becoming a, ch a church administrator, and then using the power of the state to inflict um, a persecution upon the, the, the Donatists, uh, a kind of a sect of Christianity in the fourth century. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, could I could I write a play about St. Augustine instead of writing a play about the moral majority or the silent majority? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, the, so I wrote a play about that. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Ziegler played St. Augustine. And really? Nancy Pock uh, played his, his uh, girlfriend before he was converted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And what was it like... Um uh, uh, well, one of the criticisms of it was that there was too much praying in it. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> but but it's St. Augustine. But, you know. So so my, my process tends to be, um, I'm not a very disciplined writer. I really? can't. I actually can't believe I've written as many plays as I have. You're so prolific. You must be disciplined in a certain way. Yeah, but it, uh, I I don't get up in the morning and say I have to put in right. five hours on this play. Right. There's something about the deadlines, mm -hmm. and sometimes the deadlines have been passed. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like I. I will try and fill as much time as uh, there is available and mm -hmm. maybe push the, the boundary a little bit further. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, there was uh, one of the uh, shows, one of the things we did, we um, translated, uh, I, I translated uh, Greek, uh, the Oresteia, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically three plays. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I, uh, I gradually got my Greek back up to speed because uh, basically the, the Greek I studied was biblical Greek, Koine Greek. Yeah. Uh, so I worked with a classics professor and uh, we w worked uh, through the text and I had all the ponies, you know, the various translations that have been done that yeah. I could refer back to. And, um, but we actually started rehearsing before I had finished the translation. Of, we, we were do, work, rehearsing the first part of the, the show while I was still translating the last, <laughs> the last part, part of it. <laughs> yeah. Which makes for an exciting time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, so I, I think, though, that what happens is that if you start with a question that you really have to explore, mm -hmm. you know, 
uh, that you don't know the answers. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a play about the coming of, uh, of uh, Medicare to Saskatchewan and the doctor's strike when Medicare was first introduced by Tommy mm -hmm. Douglas and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Woodrow Lloyd. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so what a, you've got, okay, what happened, but you've got the questions about uh, what, were the, what were the issues, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, what had to be decided? Mm -hmm. And as you know, you, you have to start with um, a question that uh, the audience needs to know the answer to by the end of the play. Mm -hmm. And then all of the subsequent little questions that have to keep the play driving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Um, I think those questions also uh, create a community of characters. Uh, so the process is is one of of gathering those characters that where the who are vitally concerned in in terms of the of the questions that you're asking in the play. Mm -hmm. um, uh, w uh, one of the plays that I wrote for young people, I, one day I got a call. And this is how, the, what a wonderful situation uh, the Globe was, you know. Because mm -hmm. people would just call up and say, well, okay, this is, theater is doing work for us, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas uh, quite often what happens is the, this theater is doing no kind of work for nobody, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just doing, it, they're just kind of having fun or uh, trying or to survive well. or mm -hmm. whatever. But at any rate, so I would get, so I got this call from a social worker who said, I've got a group of uh, teenage mothers, single mothers, mm -hmm. and they want some kind of play to be made out of their stories. So I met with the group, I was part of the support group for a while. I was oh. a teenage mother. <laughs> and oh. and yeah. um, we uh, finally developed a play that went on tour to schools the following year yeah. uh, that had uh, gathered around it um, two uh, people, a teenage boy who was the macho type who then got pregnant himself at the instigation of the sex gods who look down yeah. upon, uh, upon them. And uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the macho sex god says, have you looked at my, at my servant here, the, the macho kid? Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, the sex goddess says, okay, make him pregnant and see what happens. Right. So the play uh, then spins out uh, on what would happen if a guy got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Now later on, I gather there was some kind of movie or something that was based on the same idea, but uh, really? yeah, I, I, I didn't see it. But, mm -hmm. um, but the point being that, well, in that, that year at mm -hmm. any rate, Saskatchewan had the highest number of teenage pregnancies right, right. Uh, uh, per capita in the, uh, right. in the country. Um, wow. Uh, and even though you deal with these topics, uh, you still get backlash. I kept, every so often I get the feeling that, you know, I've raised some kind of controversy here and I really should go back to writing Niddle Pickle and the <laughs> Do you really plums. say that? I, or do you think, oh, that's a good sign. I've obviously done something uh, right. Well, it's just, it's just wistful. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I, I wish that mm -hmm. I could write about bunny rabbits. <laughs> But you can't. Apparently um, not.